Make sure you want to, yes. Okay, hi everyone, and welcome to our live, first live session for studying business at UL. Um, we're so happy you could join us this morning, and um, hopefully we can give you some information and, and get you excited about coming to study with us in the University of Limerick and down in the Kemi Business School. So just to kick us off, um, we'd like to get you engaging with us um, so you could like or love any of our slides or videos that we're showing today. Um, we have some polls and questions that we want to ask you to get, you know, an idea of, of how you guys are feeling and and what you want to know and what helps you make your decisions when you're choosing um, when you're choosing, you know, what to study when you come to college. So if you want to just go to www.menti.com and just pop in our code, so it's 58820941, or just scan the QR code on your phones. So we will kick it off just to let you know. So my name is Erin King. I'm a lecturer and learning technologist in the Department of Accounting and Finance in the Kemi Business School, um, but I tend to work across a range of um, a range of areas, so I have good experience across all business areas in the Kemi Business School. Um, so in the background today, I have my colleague Elaine Milan. So she um, coordinates, produces, does loads of live events um, and events, so we are in good hands today. And she is going to be back and forth with you in the Q&A, so please feel free to ask questions um, and um, comment or anything you want to do, even in this live chat. Um, and at the end, we have we are going to be joined by again uh, another colleague, so course director and lecturer in the Kemi Business School, uh, particularly in risk, the area of risk and insurance, Rob Ford. So he's going to be joining me at the end of our little presentation, um, just to kind of answer any of the questions. So so he's actually better than I am. He knows everything. So you could ask him any questions, and he would be happy to answer. Um, so the first thing I want to do is I this is a great little video, so we're going to kick you off with a nice video um, and just with former students. Those are the opportunities that it presents. I've been lucky enough to get a place here in New Ireland. Loved it ever since. International business course appealed to me specifically because there is so much variety and choice in the modules that I do. The chance to explore different modules and see which one suited me best, you get the chance to try before you buy. We offer such experiences as the Cooperative Education Program. That allows you to go out into industry getting on the job experience, learning by doing, which is a very effective part of our programs. Additionally, we are members of Erasmus, which allows our students to travel internationally to our partner universities across Europe. I'd say the best part of my course are the opportunities that it presents. I was able to go on study abroad last year. I went to Ottawa, Canada, and then I was placed on co-op here in Limerick and have been able to gain an insight into the financial sector that I would like to go into myself. The fact that you can go out into the workforce and get real life experience, you also have the opportunity to link in with massive companies, not only Irish businesses, but businesses abroad as well. I really do like the facilities here on campus. The facilities that I've used are the language hub when I was doing German for business, as well as the trading floor here for my finance modules. The opportunities that you have in UL really grows you as a person. You gain knowledge and experience, you gain confidence to be able to do things on your own. I've definitely gained a lot of insight and a lot of experience, and I now can direct that and I can see where I would like to end up and make it happen. The first seven weeks is a program that gives you everything you need to know about UL, tips and tricks and studying. They're always there to support you. The international office here on campus has been my biggest support here. They've been there just for an email, just for a chat, anything I've ever needed. The writing center is really good, especially coming up to exams. And if you ever needed anything, it's a great help. 
for someone thinking about UL, I definitely say it's more than just the course listing has to offer, and even that is pretty great. Everything else here on campus, it's been great. I've been lucky enough to get a place here in UL and loved it ever since. Okay, so that just gives you a little bit of taste, and I think it's always nice to hear from, um, from our own students. Um, and it gives you kind of a taste of, you know, what, what we have to offer from the student perspective. And there are, there's so many great facilities. So they already mentioned, you know, the language hub, the trading floor, which is, you know, kind of my specialty as well. Um, just so many different supports, um, travel and, and co-op and work placement opportunities. So all of these things are, are actually quite um, important and unique to the Kemi Business School. So thanks for everyone jumping in. So people are in and, and they're kind of ranking. We just wanted to see how would you rank these factors in choosing your degree? And the first is campus and facilities. Well, that is great news for us because Limerick, in my personal opinion, is the most beautiful campus in Ireland, um, if not um, across the globe. Um, the facilities on campus are amazing. So you have, um, it's almost a city within a city. So there's all the accommodation there. We have pubs, restaurants, cafes. Um, so it's a nice little community within, you know, the Limerick community as a whole. So we have CAO points coming up next um, and then co-op and travel op opportunities ranking third for the people. Um, location, location, location. So some of you might want to stick around and, and be closer to home. So if you're in the Munster area, um, balance of academic and social events. I'll talk to you about that as well today and just the wide range of modules that we offer. So we're going to talk to you about all of the different degrees, about customizing maybe your own degree, about if you're not sure coming in, not even to worry that, you know, you still have time to, to choose. OK, so why then choose business at UL? Um, so as mentioned, we have a diverse range of subjects, modules. Um, you know, it's it, everything isn't set in stone. So when you start on day one, your whole four years isn't mapped out for you. There's a lot of uh, movement, you know, to, to decide where you want to go. So you get a taste of everything in your first year, and then that gives you a better idea of maybe what you want to study when, when um, moving forward. Um, and even once you choose kind of your major, you could couple it with some really cool minors, with languages. There's just the options are um, so diverse. So we have amazing campus and facilities, so I don't know if any of you um, have been able to get out on campus, but in terms of the natural beauty, it's it's huge. There's so much green space. We're right on the River Shannon. The river actually cuts between the campus, so we have a beautiful bridge um, to walk across and the facilities are second to none in Ireland. So um, in terms of our sporting, the pitches, our gym, um, I think second to none in Ireland that, you know, our Munster team trains with us, um, GEA teams train with us. So in terms of facilities, there's just so much there. Again, you could customize your degree. So I mentioned that, that yes, you could talk, you could come in and have an idea that you want to maybe do accounting and finance, but then once you get in, you know, you really love economics or you really love marketing. Um, so just because you start with, you know, an idea in your head, you can actually, you know, change along the way, um, especially with our international business degree. It's actually you almost tailor make it for yourself. So not only do you have the travel, but you can actually decide on, you know, what modules and, and customize that degree for yourself. We also have work and travel, work and study abroad options. So we have Erasmus. Um, even in terms of co-op placements, you could just because in co-op is that work experience in your third year um, and you could you know travel anywhere and get that eight months experience abroad so as it's working but we have so many partner universities um, I think Elaine is going to pop in the um, just to let you know there's over 80 partner universities across the globe so um, when you're thinking of traveling anywhere so Australia Canada US 
um, anywhere in Europe. We have all those partner universities. Um, we have really great, and and it is actually one of our core beliefs down in the Chemi Business School, is we we believe in balance. So we believe that, yes, you come in, you're here to study, that there is that academic side, but we also believe that you should have kind of that social balance as well. Um, and that would include any of our clubs and societies, which range um, from, I think there's yoga society to, you know, hiking groups. Um, there's investment societies across the board, climbing, rock climbing. So we have so many clubs and societies that not only is it a great way to kind of find that balance and not just be, you know, stuck in the books the whole time, but it's a great way to meet people, um, to find like-minded people, um, to, to make some lifelong friends. We also work experience. So I think this is a huge selling point for coming to the business school is in third year, you go on an eight month work experience. So we call it co-op. Um, where we have huge supports to help you find that. You could go off and find your own if you like, but um, but it's just an invaluable experience. So I'm going to talk more, a little bit more in detail about the co-op um, later on, but just had to mention it there. And again, we'll talk about this later, but across the campus and within the Kemi Business School, we just have really good student supports. So we value our students. We know that it's a tough transition coming in from secondary school into, you know, a university setting. It's it's, it's going to be a, an adjustment for some. Some will fly right through, but fear not that we have supports across the university to help you through it. Um, and again, just in terms of the wide range of careers, Look, with business, and I'm going to be talking about this in a second, with business, I mean, you think of, you know, the normal ones, so accountants, you know, banking, finance, insurance, um, and marketing and PR, um, human resources, you know, there's such a wide range. But what I want you guys to think about, just as we're talking through this, if you think of any company in the world or any kind of kind of business, if it's if it's tech or if it's fashion or if it's sports or sports teams, if you think about it, there should be um, there is, you know, some sort of business aspect within that. So if your sports team, you're going to need marketing, you still need people to balance the books. You still need. So in terms of choosing business, you could still go into almost any sector because business is so important across across the range of, of different sectors. OK, so just a quick poll and thank you again for people coming in and and answering the question. It was just um, and for those of you maybe joining a little bit later, if you just go to www.menti.com and put in that code along the top, um, you could come in and engage with us. So we just wanted to ask, and that's why I want to lead into this, is that do you know what you want to be kind of when you grow up? Um, so do you know what career you want to go into? Um, some people do, absolutely. Uh, some people do, do not have a clue, and that is absolutely OK. Um, it's very hard at you know coming out of secondary school and know absolutely what you want to do. And I think that's why business is a really good option um, for people who maybe have an idea or do not have a clue. And it's for those reasons I mentioned. Um, so you may come in first year. As I said, you get a taste for everything. You get a taste for marketing. You get a taste for human resources. You get a taste for um, accounting, a taste for economics. And you may kind of find your passion or your footing then as well as you might, you know, join some clubs and societies or find a passion there. But with what I was saying, you might jump into kind of volunteer work, which I'll talk about later um, and and find your passion there. But with coming into a business degree where you have flexibility, where you have the opportunity to kind of, you know, go through and and grow as you're going through and find what you love. That's a really good reason to kind of come in with a business degree. And as I said, everything needs business, right? Business is a part of everything. So no matter where you find your passion, to have that, that business degree as a background is, is highly beneficial. 
So we can see that actually there's a good percentage of you, so about 60, 70 percent almost, um, do have like somewhat of an idea of what they want to do. That lucky 7 percent are absolutely sure. And yeah, are you kidding me? No clue. And that's absolutely OK. OK, so in terms of what we offer and just to give you a rundown, so I think look in these presentations, I think all of you guys are perfectly um, capable of you know jumping on and seeing what our major options are and getting a little bit more detail there. But just to give you an idea of the major options, so this is kind of an overview. Um, we're looking at accounting and finance. So once again, careers there, accounting, auditing, you know, investment banking, trading, um, anything like that. We have economics and finance. So which which kind of comes um, overlaps a little bit in terms of the finance part. Um, and then you're looking at economics, which is, you know, um, quite a broad and interesting subject. So looking at, you know, macro microeconomics, um, all of those interesting things. This is a very interesting time to be studying economics with COVID and how, you know, economies are dealing with with coming out of a pandemic. Um, we also have human resource management. So I don't know if you guys are people persons or <laughs> Um, person, people, but human resource management is, you know, a very interesting one. That's where you're looking at a little bit, um, obviously dealing with people, looking at behaviors, um, knowing how to, so any kind of conflict resolution, um, you know, going in and and being that person um, that that deals with with the the employees and with the the heart of the business, which are the employees. Marketing, so a lot of people, I think that's the most popular from this crew, um, is very exciting, I think, as well. So you're looking at everything from, you know, branding, posters, social media is huge for marketing. So if you're very techie, website design, all of that comes out of marketing. And then risk management insurance, which I think is is quite important, especially where we are now. So another really interesting and very kind of current one that we'd be looking at now. So think about, you know, we're just coming out of a pandemic and how to manage all that and moving forward. How are we going to manage? I mean, they're going to be in huge demand now that instead of being reactive, being proactive about, you know, the risk of, of these issues. So again, thanks for answering. So it's, it's pretty equal across the board. So that's that's great to see. Um, so in terms of our international business degree, Again, just chatting, it's a distinctive undergrad experience. You have the ability to design your own degree program. So just because you come in in, you know, with one pathway, no one has the exact same. So you're thinking languages, you're picking and choosing. Um, again, it's it's a business. It puts business into that international framework. So it gives you a taste of not only businesses in Ireland, but but having an idea of how it all fits together globally. Um, prepared for, it's gonna prepare you for a very rewarding and a lot of our um, graduates, you know, we have videos and, and things that will pop up on YouTube and, and share with, with the schools, but a lot of our graduates come back and they, they found it an amazing experience. Um, and, and again, the opportunity to, you know, travel and study in another university so you still get the benefit of being again in Limerick, finding your feet in college, um, you know, getting used to your time management and studying and and the social side. But then you get to go somewhere in the world, Europe, Canada, US, Latin America, all the way to Asia or Australia. And you have the opportunity to study in another university during your degree. So I think that for me, I'm a big traveler, so I think that for me is a huge would be a huge selling point. So in case and I think some of you so we, we saw some of you just kind of know, but I found this. This is a lovely um, video that, you know, if you're still not sure what what a business degree could do. Well, let's see what um, what happens with Alice. My first day at Fendi was terrifying. Would I be nothing more than a character in The Devil Wears Prada, carrying out mundane tasks like photocopying and coffee runs? Hi, 
My name is Alice. As a third year business and French student at UL, the obvious choice of destination for my co-op would have been Paris or Biarritz. But I set my sights firmly on the Big Apple. It took lots of research and planning and jumping through hoops. But it was worth it when I got the placement of my dreams at the luxurious fashion brand Fendi. I was delighted to be right in the thick of things in the PR and marketing department. I was often involved with providing outfits for top magazine photo shoots. One of the looks I pulled for actress Mila Kunis landed on the cover of Allure magazine. I've also pulled looks for a number of other celebrities, including Jessica Alba, Edward Norton and Diane Lane. My advice to anyone even considering studying business and French at UL is to go for it. This has been the best experience of my life and the first step into an exciting career in marketing. So as you can see, Alice had a very um, exciting experience. So going to New York, number one, working in Fendi, number two, you know, meeting stars and everything else. And and yes, she just put she she did say that, you know, that's a little bit of work, but she does have the support um, of, you know, the the international office you know, co-op, we have so many different supports at UL um, that I just found that was an exciting case study that um, business isn't boring. So um, it's quite exciting. So I know we're just getting short on time and Elaine is, has let me know that there's some fantastic questions coming through. So I'll just kind of go through um, a few more points with our Erasmus, for example. So it's um, the International Exchange Program to study abroad at a partner university. Again, we have well over 80 partners um, within the Kemi Business School. Um, it's the academic semester is fully recognized as part of, of your UL degree. Um, usually every year we have um, over 600 students that, that partake in our, in our partner universities. And in its exchange program can be absolutely one of the best experiences of your life. So you get, you know, you're exposed to a different culture, you're um, traveling, you know, you're just getting a taste for something different. Um, so participating in something like this can be an amazing experience. So we believe in balance. So if you're worried about making new friends, there's so many events that run across the campus each academic year. So we have things like Freshers Week, we have the first seven weeks as was mentioned in the video. So this is just to help you find your feet. Um, we have Charity Week, which is um, kind of, you know, there's there's events all through that. Um, again, I mentioned the clubs and societies. So if you can join one, find that balance, meet some people, meet some friends. We have international evenings. There's trivia nights. Um, so there's something for everyone. There's live concerts and visiting DJs. And again, as I mentioned, UL is a little city within Limerick, right? So there's loads of restaurants. So there's, you know, Starbucks, Subway, Chops, um, loads of different restaurants, cafes, pubs, shops. It's all on the campus. So you're a community within itself. Um, as I mentioned, the work experience. So co-op in your third year, from January to August, you'll have a placement in, you know, a company or a work placement that would suit whatever major option, so degree. So if you go, if you've chosen accounting, you often go into um, accounting firm, marketing could be any business across. So you just get that eight months of work experience. A lot of our students actually end up with contracts for, so they have a job as soon as they graduate. And this kind of learning experience, so this work experience looks amazing upon graduation on your CV. So you're not coming out um, like a green graduate. You have eight months of work experience when you graduate. So it distinguishes you from all of the graduates. So in terms of our student supports, we have, you know, everything for academic support, financial support. We have personal support. So if you're not adjusting well, we have so many people you could talk to. Um, all types of disability supports. So we bring you through accessibility is and you know universal design is one of our um, passions down in the Kemi Business School. Um, we have the campus medical center right on campus. We have which is unique to KBS. We have peer support. So we have your fellow students kind of doing those those tough first year you know business tutorials with you. Um, and and some people are more comfortable with with asking questions maybe with students. We have library and tech supports. Um, we have the language hub as mentioned by Rachel in her first video. 
So the supports are there. So don't, I know people are probably nervous coming into um, kind of university or college life, but you know, the number of supports that we have um, will help you along, absolutely. So we also have unique to the Kemi Business School, a student ambassador program. So this is another kind of draw for you. Um, it's it's where you could work with, you know, KBS faculty like myself or Rob or Elaine, um, fellow students on different projects. So things like events, any marketing, social media, um, community outreach, website development, video production, all of these things you could jump in and get um, and volunteer. So an example is is we run a TEDx University of Limerick event. You could jump in and and volunteer with that. Um, if that's not your thing and you want to, you know, go more out into the community, uh, loads of faculty work with with um, different charities across the city. Um, and you end up with a president's award, so you get a medal at the end and depending on the number of hours, you could have gold, silver or bronze. And you know what? You become part of another community. You're you're again meeting people. You're getting that experience. Um, so it's all all quite amazing. So. Um, just if you want to, so we're just going to kind of close out with a video, but if you want to just start typing in, if you go into Menti and just start typing in, and I always think that this is um, this is nice to see how other people are feeling, right? So, oh good, I'm not the only, I'm not the only one that's nervous or, you know, some are excited, so that's fantastic, or worried or anxious. I think that there's, there would be more people um, feeling the same way and that might, might help you. So, just if you get a chance, pop in, tell us how you're feeling about starting college and then we'll come back and have a look and so you can see that you're not the only one. So, we might close out well, Elaine is going to start feeding us um, some some of the questions and Rob and I will pop back in to answer your questions. And so uh, this this video, Tom has been lovely enough to to kind of provide us with this video, but it's because he loves the business school and he loves studying business with us. So um, for you, those of you who don't know, it's the Limerick Surla senior hurling champ, um, Tom Morrissey, and he studied business with us. So. I think it'll be nice to to get an idea of what what Tom has to say. Hi guys, sorry I can't be with you tonight, but I'm caught up with training but I'm more than happy to be part of this uh, event with the Kemi Business School. I suppose looking back, my Kemi Business School experience started off in 2014 uh, when I studied business in UL. Uh, I think the main reason why I, I selected to study business in UL was uh, really when I was your age at being, going, at being 17, 18, going through secondary school. And I knew I had a kind of a flair for business. I studied the three main, uh, I suppose, core business subjects in secondary school, being accounting, economics, and business itself. Um, and while I knew I wanted to go down business, I wasn't certain of which exact um, and specific area in business that I wanted to pursue. Um, and when it came to time to filling out the CEO form, something that you'll all be doing soon enough, I think that was one thing that struck with me that I wanted to get a course that kind of allowed me get a, a taste for maybe all different business areas, which is exactly what business study does. Um, you know, you get to test each of the five core business areas being accounting, economics, insurance, marketing and human resources. Um, and I think when I look back on my experience of the course, that was definitely one of my favorite things about it. Um, as I said, I wasn't really sure which one I wanted to do, but business in UL, I suppose the first two years of the course, um, you, you don't select which specific area you want to go into. Instead, you get a, a taste for each of those five areas that I said. Um, and it's not until third year you decide on which one you're going to major in and I suppose focus on. Um, so I, I, I really you know, like that the idea of that and getting experience in loads of different areas and being sure then when it did come to the decision time of which one you wanted to do, you, 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 you had a fair idea which one you wanted. Outside of the classroom or at the lecture hall, which it'll be when you go to UL, um, you know, another another factor that I, I, I decided it was just for the top class, you know, college that it is and campus that it is. And I suppose specifically for me, the top class sporting campus that it is. 
and um, you know their, their their facilities for me are, are definitely the best in Ireland um, and they range from 3D pitches and that cater for all sports they have an Olympic swimming pool an Olympic diving pool uh, running tracks both outdoor and indoor you know if you, you, you name it and you will probably have it so whatever sport you're into you know they have a high performing environment that I suppose for me I just wanted to be around that and be involved in that and that was one of the huge huge attractions for me to to go to UL also just to wrap up then um just a message for our, our students listening tonight um I know you'll either be sitting the leaving cert this year or in the next year or two um and at the moment it's a bit unpredictable whether it'll be a continuous assessment or your typical and traditional exams in June um, so just a, a, li a little bit of advice I, I would give to you is just to make sure that you, you stay tipping along from, from the start and that you're, 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 you're gaining knowledge each, each and every single day. Just put a little focus, a little bit of study in, ter you know, in terms of you know, a different subject each night and you know, just tipping along nicely, building, building your knowledge. And, and, and I suppose when it comes to then either a continuous assessment or the exams in June, you, you know you'll be ready because you will have that knowledge built up over a period of time. Lastly, thanks very much to the Kemi Business School for having me. I hope tonight's a great success and I hope you all enjoy it. Cheers, guys. Okay, so as I said, it's always nice to hear from former students. So we might just come back and see some of um, some more from our word cloud. Um, so thanks again to Tom Morrissey for uh, giving the video. Um, so yeah, you could just take a look there. So it's it's a mix of everyone's pretty happy, excited, hopeful. Um, and then on the other side, there are people who are nervous and anxious. So worried, everything else. So I think there's there's almost a comfort in knowing that, you know, you're not the only one who's maybe feeling nervous or worried about starting starting university. Okay, so I think Elaine has let me know that there's loads of questions coming in. Um, so I just see one there that she's passed on. So hi, I was just wondering, and I might bring Rob in on this one. I'm sure you're sick of hearing me. Um, so I'll bring Rob in on this one. So it's just hi, I was just wondering, would you need to have done economics for the leaving cert to do economics and finance, or is it started from the start? So if Rob wants to come in there. Thanks, sir. Um, Great. Uh, no, it's a good, good question. Quite, quite, a, quite a common question, in fact. Sorry. Um, hi, everyone. My name is uh, Robert Ford. I, I'm course director. I forgot to mention that. Um, I'm course director of the Bachelor of Business Studies uh, program. But the question there about about have I done economics? I know Tom in his presentation said that he did all three business topics, but no, it's fine. In fact, it's fine that you've done none. To be honest, I know the the Business Studies Teachers Association don't want us to say that, but no, it's fine. We we assume that. Some people have not done one of the topics, so we have to assume that nobody has done any of the topics, if that makes sense. So, for example, I did the BBS program many years ago and I didn't do accountancy or economics, but yes, they're easily manageable. They start from the very start and assume you haven't done uh, any at all. So, no, you're, you're perfectly fine. Uh, yeah, you can get away without. I actually did mostly science subjects uh, and in Leaving Cert. And no, you can absolutely pursue a business studies degree without having done business in Leaving Cert. And I, I think while I'm waiting for more questions to pop in, I think that's kind of the point. And I like the answer that was there. So I can, I'm, can you still hear me? Or? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, great. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Um, sorry, no, it's just, I just, I, I like the, the I like the answer that not so many people know what they want to do or what they want to be. And in fact, we, we kind of prefer that, I think. I think because there is such a whole new world out there that perhaps you haven't heard of, that if you've made up your mind already, it's kind of, I, I'm concerned that you've made up. I mean, hopefully you've made up your mind that you might like to pursue accounting, but there are so many different avenues that you could pursue. OK, you can end up being an accountant responsible for like accountability, like for a, a corporates, a environmental, social or governance responsibility and things like that. So no, don't be fully sure that what you want to do uh, when you come in, because allow us, give us the opportunity to maybe uh, inform you and persuade you in, in that there's, there's many, many different things you can do. Right, I better. So yeah, if you want to keep the questions coming, that'd be great. Erin, did you want to? Yeah, perfect. Yeah, so there's just one actually about one of our master's programs, Rob. Um, so the MSc in Business Analytics covers three semesters. I was just wondering how long the summer semester is at UL. 
So in terms of kind of our master's programs, it does look like three semesters, but with the business analytics program, um, it's it's a business simulation kind of project and it, it, it's, it goes over, I think, June and maybe into July. Rob might pop in and let me know, but usually the summer semester is something like that, that it's some sort of business simulation um, or dissertation, so research. Um, and yeah, Rob, did you want to yeah. maybe add to that? Yeah, so in, in business analytics, it is. It's actually, I don't think it's even a full summer semester. It you, Technically, you will finish in September, but because usually with other master's programs, there's a dissertation that you submit in August, September, whereas with business analytics, you do that virtual, uh, th that, that business workshop, and therefore you're actually finished quite early. So that your summer semester in terms of your responsibility to engage with the, the with the program kind of ends quite early in the summer. So it wouldn't be a full full summer semester, no. If that's okay. Yeah, no, that's perfect. Thanks, Rob. Um, yeah, so that's the great thing. And uh, it's great to see already interest in our in our postgraduate programs. Um, so is it mandatory to take a language as part as the, as part of the international business degree? I can bring Rob in on that one as well. Uh, can you hear me? Okay, or is it, yeah, Absolutely. okay, great. Yeah, no, it's it's um, no, it's not mandatory at all. No, in fact, uh, some people uh, they, they see it as obviously it, it's it's very useful, especially if you're going into international corporations. Having a language is extremely useful, but no, that there's there's many other different avenues that you can take in the the international business program. You can instead of doing maybe the language aspect, you could steer towards more humanities like politics or, or sociology or something as well. Like, and it, just a different perspective on a business degree. So no, language is, is not essential. And again, even if you're not doing a language, you can still study abroad. We do have many partners across the world who teach in English. So not having a language will not prohibit you uh, from going abroad either for your uh, Erasmus, or sorry, for your, your student placement, but also for your work placement. Yeah, perfect. Um, see, I told you guys, Rob, Rob is, uh, <laughs> he knows all. Um, so we have another one here, Rob. If you go into the BBS and do Spanish, are you restricted to modules like business and law? Is that still an option? So I'm assuming that, that this person maybe would like, you know, the, the possibility to do law. So if you want to specialize in that, is that an option? Yeah, and that, that is a thing. So if you do a language as part of the BBS program, you don't also then do a minor option. So a minor option you would choose in third year, uh, whereby you, you do first year in general, you'll do half a second year, and then in the second half a second year, you do a major, and in third year, you, you choose something else, a minor option, and one of those can be law. Um, so if you're doing a language, you wouldn't have the option to do law, but if you're a strong student, you can take a sixth subject. We're fine as course directors, we encourage if people have the ability to take on an extra workload, we're happy to let you take law. No problem whatsoever. We, we recommend you focus on your five core modules, but many do take it as additional. Again, we give you a program, a set program of five, but if you're a strong student, the world is your oyster. You can choose pretty much whatever you want to do as a sixth subject on a, on a pass-fail basis. Um, I'll be teaching you a bit of law, so good luck with that, but otherwise, um, and then you'll also be doing some core law modules in fourth year as well. Uh, so you'll actually have done quite a bit of law as part of your general business degree without even having to, to minor in it. Um, and so, here's okay. a good one, Rob. I might just keep you there. Is what's they just want to know um, what's the difference between? I, I think there's loads of differences, but maybe if you could sum what the best way you would summarize, what's the difference between the BBS and the international business course? Yeah, no, it's and sometimes on the face, but it does look like they're, they're they're relatively the same, except the CEO points are 100 different. I think we ask international business to make bigger choices earlier. So in first year, they kind of have to choose roughly. So like, like they choose maybe I want to do accounting and economics and you choose those in first year. Um, and so whereas in the BBS, you have a longer time to emerge yourself in other topics before you have to make those kinds of, of big choices in terms of your trajectory. So really it's it's how early also uh, it's compulsory you go abroad to study on the international business and compulsory you go abroad on Erasmus or sorry on co-op if you're in international business. Whereas with the, the Bachelor of Business Studies, it is your choice. 
So you can you can choose to stay here or to stay in Europe uh, to study, or you can choose to uh, stay here or abroad to work as well. So a lot more a lot more choice in terms of international movement. Uh, international, you know, the mature students come in, they they kind of have a better idea of what they want to do, and they they so they can make those choices in first year. Um, so yeah, that's that's kind of the key differences. But I think I, I'm kind of piggybacking on some of their good ideas, things like dual degrees and so on, which have been fantastic for the international business program. And um, if you have any questions on that, let me know. Uh, we brought those into the BBS as well. So I think we just give you a little bit more time, especially for those people that perhaps didn't do as many business subjects in leaving cert. They want to maybe immerse themselves in topics more in the BBS before they start making choices. If that answers the question. Yeah, no, that's fantastic, Rob. Um, oh, so one of one of the questions are the lectures nice? Well, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, well yeah, if you're nice, the there, here, there's, so. a, there, there's a reciprocity. Absolutely. <laughs> if you're nice, then the lectures are nice. But if you're not so nice, then I'm sure that you will you will receive in kind. No, we, we are very proud of the lectures that we have here. Uh, some you'll see on TV quite a bit. I mean, you're talking about like the likes of Stephen Kinsler and so on. That yeah, no, we have we have excellent lectures, world-renowned lectures in their fields, and also it's why we're we're so, so highly ranked as a business school. It's not just our ability to teach, but our ability to research and and teach you the newest and most up-to-date uh, sort of trajectories of the business worlds that we're very proud of. So yeah, we're nice, but we're also effective. I hope, and I hope you're looking for both. Okay, a friendly face, but also someone who's who will effectively teach you about the business world and, and prepare you first. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. No, absolutely agree. I mean, the, this is uh, my experience of of working um, with the faculty has been amazing. So um, just know that yeah, you're coming into people who know their stuff, um, who are supportive, and I think especially first years, you're you're often afraid to to approach us. So um, a lot of our lecturers are very approachable and and um, and would be happy to to help you in, in so many ways. But again, it is it works both ways. Yeah, <laughs> um, oh, absolutely. <laughs> so we're even looking. So if COVID is no longer a factor, will there be some online classes? Um, that's an interesting question, actually. Hey, um, yeah, I don't know, I, what do you? I think we've we've kind of moved in a in a way that um, with moving with technology. So I think a lot of lectures have incorporated more technology into their courses. Um, so they may add an online aspect to some of the modules, but would it be fully online? I don't I don't believe so. No, what do you no think, I, I don't think so, but I think we'd, we'd be foolish not to realize that there has been some efficiencies that we've created and that th there's there's more there's there's other ways that we can teach a student body. So yeah. that that kind of that, that phrase that we currently use and that, that, that kind of blended learning that no, we still like the face to face. We like the interactions. We like to to look at one another in, in the eye and communicate with one another. Those things I never want to get rid of. But I think there are certain aspects of the, the online platforms that really do work for students and for lectures. OK, it, it, it provides a greater flexibility. It's still a full time college program. OK. It's not where it, we're, it's undergraduate programs are not quite ready for for online distance learning or part time learning yet. We you're still going to be a full time student and we want you to be a full time Joe college student on campus interacting with one another. There's there's more to college than just the classes. There is the, the social there's the so, social aspect that we really want you to embrace. And again, I see questions about I'm, I'm quite shy or I'm an introvert and things like that, but and allow us and allow the university to to maybe help you out of that shell a small bit, give you the confidence that you have that ability to communicate with others. And so that's why live college for me it, with, with should always primarily be face to face, in my opinion. Is that OK? Um, yeah, no, absolutely. And and that's what I mean, just um, finding that approach. And I think Rob hit the nail on the head there is that there's so much more to college than just you know going to lectures and and everything else and and I think we've really embraced you know you know unique ways of teaching and and it's uh, I think it'll look a little bit different um, but but I absolutely agree that um, you want that interaction and you want to 
you know, that's where you're going to make your friends, find your tribe, as Elaine said there. Um, so, so you should be looking forward to that side of it. Um, so just maybe we'll just take these two more um, or a couple more questions. So I think, Rob, you spoke about making friends and we talked about clubs and society. So um, the, you tend to find your little groups and in a big course, um, it just asks, are, is it hard to make friends in such a big course? Actually, you have, you know, the, the big larger lectures, but then you're broken down into smaller tutorials. So you do have smaller, smaller classes that you're not, you know, always in a room with, with 500 people that you, you do break down into, into smaller tutorials. So there's absolutely an option. Um, so maybe this one is a good one for you, Rob. I'm unsure about what course I want. And if they've chosen the business course, can they switch to law and accounting? Yeah. And, and so, so good, good news on that. The way that works is it's called an internal transfer. So you could come in, or you could vice versa. You could come into law and accounting, and realize that actually it's too specific for your liking, and you want to maybe explore other aspects of business. And so, what you can do is request an internal transfer. So in first year, you can request an internal transfer within UL. And so, so long as you have the CAO points for the program you want to trans transfer into. And they are willing to accept the transfer because obviously there has to be a quota. We can't take in 10 in CEO and then 50 internal transfers. So there's there's a limit to how many we can take. But yes, absolutely you can. If you have sufficient CEO points, there is the opportunity to internally transfer between programs, except our very limited number. So like our international business program has a very limited number. And so therefore they're very they're not as likely to accept internal transfers whereas in the bbs program i think i took in 19 if i'm allowed to divulge that information i took in uh, 19 uh, this semester from other programs across the university so yeah so there is that option yeah perfect thanks rob um and another one so if wanting to major in marketing or any of the other kind of business majors that we offer in the bbs is international business still a good option Okay, and, and that, so this this is the thing, right? So the, the students who go to international business are, are highly motivated, highly effective students, but they they specialize in two, whereas in the BBS you kind of specialize in one. So if you, if you have it as a whole, you kind of that you're doing a business program, and in the BBS you will major in accounting or you will major in risk, whereas if you're doing B, uh, the if you take the international business, you kind of do fifty percent economics. 50% finance or 50% economics, 50% marketing. So now you won't be a jack of all trades, okay? You'd be highly accomplished in both, but a uh, international, you, you spread yourself out a bit more. You kind of do a double major, whereas in the BBS, you'll do a major and a minor. I, I don't know how familiar you are with that, that type of phrasing, but that's that's kind of the, the difference between the two. But both of them offer the same options. They both offer the accounting, economics, finance, marketing, HR, and risk and insurance uh, channels that you can pursue. Perfect. And we might just um, close it off with, I might actually blend these kind of questions together for you, Rob, but um, and yep. then just close it out there. But one of the options for you guys to do is we're on three separate times. So if you want to jump back into maybe the Q&A at you know, half 12 or half one, um, feel free to do so if we don't get or if you want to hear more of our answers or if there's different questions. So you could jump in and join us there. You don't have to listen to the whole talk. You could just come in around, you know, the halfway mark. Um, so just looking there, Rob, do you need a basis in language if you want um, the international business? Is there an alternative to the Erasmus? And where do you customize your degree or when for international business would you customize your degree? So that's sorry, I'm putting yeah, a lot of perfect and um, so into one. Yeah, no worries. So, so you do if you're using if you're going into advanced, so if you're going to French or German or advanced Spanish, you do require a H4 in those languages before you come into university. However, if you want to do Japanese or beginner Spanish, you just need to have another language besides uh, English. So if you've done a H4 in Irish, for example. So if you want to do those advanced languages, yes. If you want to do beginner Spanish or Japanese, no, you don't need a background in those. Uh, alternative option for Erasmus, if you are a BBS student, you don't have to go on Erasmus. 
Okay, no, you, 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 there's a semester here, only a, a proportion, maybe 10% of our students from BBS go on Erasmus. For international business, yes. I mean, if you if you don't want to go on Erasmus, then the international business program uh, is probably not the choice for you. But if you want to do business, then the BBS program is for you. So if yeah, so there is an alter there isn't an alternative uh, if you do the international business program. And um, for international business, when do you customize your degree? Yes, in first year you start to make choices. You go in in the first semester and you start making choices about what you'd like to to begin doing in the second semester of first year. So you do have to to make those choices earlier. So again, people who tend to have a background in business um, and have a fair idea of what they might like to do, they're more likely to go into international business. So yeah, I think there's some really good questions there, and it shows that the people are they're looking for the nuances and not just kind of oh please tell me what I want to do with the rest of my life, but they're actually they seem uh, they seem the questions are very well informed as well, which is fantastic. Yeah. So. So thank you so much, Rob. Again, you are definitely the right person to be in on these talks because you know everything. Um, so I think we'll we'll wrap up this session there. We're back at at again um, twelve and then one. So if you want to jump into even just the Q and A's, if if we didn't get to your questions or if you want to just see if you've missed something, then pop in maybe around half twelve or half one. You don't have to listen to me for the first bit. Um, so welcome to come back and thank you everyone for participating and for engaging with us. And I, as I have to agree with Rob, some really great questions coming in. So, so um, hopefully we've we've helped you out there and helped answer your questions. And remember, you can pop into our Pubble as well. There's a live Q and A um, going on there. So we'll say goodbye for now. We'll be back at 12. Give us a little breather. Um, so thank you, Rob. Um, absolutely. So again with all of your knowledge coming in a uh, big thank you to elaine len who is um working in the background and keeping us all going um and and just moderating the questions so a big thanks to elaine and rob